says I'm slightly better in the resulting position because I've got a pawn in the center and you don't. That is pretty good reasoning. I stand behind that. And now we see some trades, but black is not really much worse here. You play d6, you play a5, you get your knight out, uh, you start with a5. But the, the point is that black is very solid. Where are the weaknesses? There are none to point out. Now, the one thing that I'd watch out for is if white plays queen c2 here and gets clever, mm -hmm. look out for knight g5. It loses a piece on g5, but you gain the bishop on b7. So it's easy to forget about tactics like that. It most certainly is. LPDO goes C5. down. Loose pieces drop off. C5 looks C5. so strong here. Crunching through the center and forcing weaknesses in black structure. Another miss by Magnus. And of course, the idea is BC Rook C5. Exasperation on the face of Magnus as he hands Hikaru another incredibly pleasant position out of the open. And look at Hikaru side-eyeing Magnus. He's like, what are you doing? Like, he he really, noticed Magnus, that e5? he has C5. <laughs> and, and Magnus also is like, what am I doing? They're both asking the same question. But there's a big problem for black. This A4 pawn, it wasn't A5 and about to be captured. Now it's an A4, but it's a long-term weakness. You have to keep your rook defending it, maybe to bring another piece to the defense as well. I just feel like things are going wrong for Magnus as of this stage of the match. Definitely. Hikaru's up a point. He's in control. He's in control in this game. But to take the devil's advocate side, it's really not the end of the world for black. Black has this pawn chain. It's relatively well defended. What's funny is that Hikaru doesn't actually have to move the rook away from C5 just yet. He can make a calm move like A3. Now, he does move the rook, but not because he has to, because he wanted to. He's attacking A4. He could try to bring the queen up to B4. A lot of energy among white's pieces here. And Magnus has to figure out a way to get this knight into the game. Maybe just knight D7 is the way to do it. And the good news for Magnus is if he can successfully get his knight to c5, it's kind of like an outpost because white mm -hmm. can't play b2 to b4 because of en passant. The a pawn will capture a knight on c5, defends that pawn on a4, it stares the e4 square in the center. So that's what Magnus needs to go for. But as you were indicating, there might be some pressure against the black king. That's a rook lift on c4. It could swing all the way over to h4. So be very, oh. very careful if you're Magnus because your king may find itself the victim of an attack. And there's another devilish idea that I think Hikaru has cooked up. Let's bring him an analysis board real fast. Knight d7. I think his idea is quite into knight c5. It defends everything. Look at that rook on d1. There's an x-ray going on, and rook takes c5 wins material. You win a queen and a piece for two rooks, and then you top it off with knight g5, the idea you mentioned earlier. This is out of the question. And if knight c5 is impossible, then how, Hikaru might politely ask, are you defending the a4 and c7 pawns at the same time? I think black has ways to tactically defend them, maybe rook takes c2 against rook c7, but Robert, all of that has to be calculated and planned out very carefully. When you're down a point, you don't want to walk uh, walk the tightrope. You want a nice, solid game. Yeah, and there's bishop a6 ideas for black as well. At some point, bishop a6 hits the rook on c4 and the pawn on e2, uh, but right now I think black is just a little bit too loose to play that move because the a4 pawn is that important, but you know that Magnus is calculating bishop a6 with rook e2 to follow. Bishop a6, it does open up the diagonal. It's a very tactical move, and my guess is that Hikaru... It's not necessarily that he missed Bishop A6. I just think he intuitively believes in the power of his pieces. He believes that he's going to find something in that position. And you can just tell both players are hard at work calculating Bishop B7 to A6. And maybe A3 is worth throwing in for Black as well. Just a thought. And that pineapple is hard at work. Look at it glowing in the background behind the car. <laughs> right? That is his streamer setup when he is not in California. And he is focused. Look at him. He's looking at this board. He thinks that Magnus is going wrong here. And Magnus, let me, the look on his face is one of disgust. And he does develop the knight to d7. So, Danya, queen c2, double attack. There must be something that Magnus has. And a3 is played, but apparently not great. And this is what he has been cooking up for the last minute and a half. Or he actually spent two minutes and 25 seconds on the move 97. And it wasn't that move he was busy finding. It was the move A3. What's going on here, Robert? There's so many hanging pawns. Rook takes C7 comes to mind. I think he wants something like Bishop E4. And he wants to use the contact that the Black Queen is making with the White Rook to be able to play A takes B2. So I think Hikaru's first order of business has to be to address this A3 pawn. Am I... On the right track here is knight g5 possible what's happening robert so many questions and i think that if you go b3 a very calm move just avoiding the pawn trade there could be a move rook a7 so he goes knight g5 hitting the h7 pawn the queen has to take the knight the bishop takes the bishop on b7 and after black is rook a to b8 saving the rook and attacking the bishop the c7 pawn 
falls. White goes up a pawn. It looks like a healthy extra pawn. So unless Magnus can drum up some counterplay, he is simply worse. And he doesn't have much time to drum it up. Rook takes d7 here. There's the move queen g5 to b5, wow. forking the rook and the bishop. Magnus saw that from a mile away. Unbelievable calculation by both players. And talk about walking the tightrope. You're automatically walking the tightrope when you're letting a pawn live on b2 like this. That was impressive. I mean, Magnus sees rook d7, queen b5, and the bishop can move up to c6. But then black gets a second queen. The rook, the queen, and the pawn all in the same line. You get to promote, you win the game in short order. So right now, it's a big moment for a car. You want to play queen takes b2, give me that pawn, but you walk into a pin. So there could be a knight c5 shot, putting mm -hmm. pressure on the pin piece. White is well defended for the moment, but Danya, it looks scary even if white remains better. That was satisfying, putting pressure on a pin piece. That was quite a bit of alliteration. Hikaru says, I don't care about that pin. I'm just taking all of your pawns. Look at that. Rook takes d6, laughing in the face of danger. And what Hikaru is saying is, hey, look, yeah, my bishop's under pressure, but how are you going to put more pressure on it? I've got two defenders. That's all I need. I could slide my rook to b6 if necessary. And Robert Magnus might be running out of ideas here, and he is down two pawns. Let's not forget that. He's down two pawns. His knight doesn't have any outposts anymore. The pawn on d6 was captured. That was an important piece protecting the knight on c5. So where is that knight going? You need to get some counterplay, some threats. I feel like he might be close to lost already. Yeah, and the evil bar is bearing that out. I'm looking at rook e7, try to get this rook off. Of, but then black is experiencing problems with his back rank. There's rook c8 check. It's not that there's options and they're complicated. I don't think there, Magnus is a single move here. He might have to just take twice on b7 and try to win one of white's pawns back, but even that's easier said than done. Well, if he could trade on b7 and win the a2 pawn, if we just toss that pawn off the board, mm -hmm. that does give black pretty good chances to survive because a rook and four against a rook and three. That's white with a rook and the four pawns from e2 to h2 and black having a rook and three pawns. That is a theoretical draw. It's not easy. Jeroen PK beat Gary Kasparov in that exact end game. So if Gary Kasparov can lose, then anybody in the Polina can lose. But that said, <laughs> that is the aim for Magnus Carlsen. And he's down to 20 seconds. 20 seconds. I feel like he is a bit aimless. <laughs> He definitely is, and Ikaru doesn't even need two extra pawns to win when the opponent has 20 seconds on the clock. He drops the knight back to e6. I like that from a practical standpoint. I think Magnus's only real source of counterplay is going to be that knight hopping around. It can hop into f4 using the pin. So Ikaru's not out of the woods, and he doesn't think he's out of the woods. He drops the rook back to c4, and look at the attention to detail, Robert, in Hikaru's play. What does that move do? It stops knight f4. That's why he put it on c4, and he can move it to b4 to finally unpin the bishop, and then he's free to roam about the cabin. Although rook b4, there could be the like queen c5, just keeping the pin alive. He goes rook b6, queen a5, queen e1 check is kind uh -oh. of a threat. Doesn't lead to it anything is. significant just yet, but the e2 pawn may collapse. Be very careful. I see a tactic, actually. If black can move queen e1, king g2, knight f4 check, giving up the knight, taking on e2, things oh, like that. Great it recognition. looks a bit worrisome. And Hikaru sending the queen to e1. I think after knight f4 check, the rook takes on f4. I know you were talking more hypothetically, but what's not hypothetical is that Magnus has five seconds on his clock. His counterplay is getting just brutally extinguished, and Hikaru just a couple more accurate moves away from solidifying his material advantage and winning this game. Is he going to move his bishop? Is this the time to move it to d5 or c6? I think it looks, seems like a great time. Bishop d5 looks very good. There may be a swap on b5 because there is no knight c7. The rook on e8 is loose in all these positions. Oh, Look at this clinical technique, but Magnus desperately wants that d4 square, and a card doesn't play e3 and allows the knight in. And the reason he played a4 was in order to meet rook takes b5 with a takes b5. This is a passer, and he's going to push it, and Magnus has no choice but to get a pair of rooks off the board, stopping knight d4, Hikaru eliminating every sliver of counterplay that Magnus is coming up with here. This is brilliant play from Hikaru Nakamura. He could have played rook b8, but then a4 would have dropped, and Hikaru does not want to give up that pawn. Just and now he progress, can push. move by move. And then he knight can d4, push though. and meet queen b6. Ah, trying to trade the queens. Good call by you. Keep pushing. Or rook a4, get behind the pawn. Magnus has literally two moves to drum something up, because that pawn is reaching a8 in a tizzy, and Magnus flags. It's over. He actually resigned before he flagged with 0.2 seconds left. Oh, he but did. it doesn't matter. Hikaru Nakamura jets out to a two-point lead over the world champion Magnus Carl.